How are we doing today? Congratulations again to the newlyweds and all of our Oklahoma friends that have come down for it. Glad you're here. A little bit less humid than what you're used to, I know, but it'll warm up towards the end of next week, or this week, I guess, actually. It's supposed to be hitting back in the 90s, so hang around and make you feel welcome. <laughs> okay, let's see. Announcements. Tuesday, 7 a.m., Women's Bible Study. 7 p.m., Praise Team Practice. Uh, be in prayer for Vacation Bible School coming up July 8th through the 12th. Okay, so they're having a VBS meeting right after the morning service. So if you're in any way involved with that, teen helpers included, uh, stick around and she'll get you squared away. Uh, prayer request, Vicki Childers, Josh, Nancy and Bob, Bonnie and family, Anastasia's dad, Sandy and JD, Larry Crump and family. I think that's supposed to be Joe Ellen. Is that supposed to be Joe Ellen? Thank you for your effort, Pastor. We enjoyed it. Yeah. Bobby and Clayton. Any other prayer requests this morning? Okay, we'll lift you up in prayer, Sarah. I know it's difficult losing it. A school, but you're getting a new school, so just just me making the change. I know it's going to be tough, but we'll pray for you. Anybody have anything else? Yes, Martha. Okay, Stan, where are they going to remove this time? So Tuesday morning, be in prayer, especially for Stan and Martha, because I know it's a strain, <laughs> not knowing what's going to come out. And the Lord is good, and I'm sure he'll undertake in your behalf there, Stan. Any other prayer requests? Any other prayer requests? Okay. Anniversaries. Anybody have any anniversaries this week? Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> Stand up. Stand up. That's there. Congratulations again. You know, I, I bet Braden had Grace write him. <laughs> I don't know. I, no, I've seen the papers. Handwriting's not like Grace's. <laughs> okay, that's what matters. No other anniversaries. Any birthdays coming up this week? No June birthdays. Uh oh all right okay yeah yeah we usually make you come up in front of everybody <laughs> okay first of all how old are you gonna be i'm gonna be 13. 13 brand new teenager yeah what are you looking forward to now that you're 13. getting older you know, sometimes that's all you had to look forward to is trying to get older. So, okay, Sarah, let's sing happy birthday.
By the way, we usually don't make visitors come up front, but your brother is over there going, make him go, make him go, you know, so. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have anything before we go to prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we can come to your throne and worship you and praise you for all that you've done for us. We ask that you be with these prayer requests. You know each individual and each situation and, and what they need most now is your touch, whether it's healing or emotional or, or whatever it may be, dear Lord. We know that you give graciously as you are the one and only mighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we thank you for all that you've given us. We ask that you be with Pastor as he brings the morning message. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, kids, you are dismissed. Hello, hello. <laughs> You're not filling in for Riley today? I guess not. I didn't realize what you said. I was going to I just, I just assumed that you, you filled in once. You filled in once. I mean, that means that's your new position. Oh, it's Bobby's turn? Oh, well, he's fishing. Simon's in trouble. Well, well, we wouldn't make you. You have your folks here who we get to spend a little bit of time with the other day. Thank you for for uh, for the good meal that we had and uh, for uh, the good conversation. Um, all the things that people have told you about folks from Oklahoma aren't true. They're very nice and kind people, regardless of Braden. They're not all like that. And hey, the little fella up here, his name is his name is Elijah Gabriel, and they call him Eli. How how cool is that? Yeah. So thanks for coming up and letting us sing Happy Birthday to you, Eli. And uh, what's that? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was it, what, they are they're super nice people. Mom and dad served in the Air Force for dad for 14 years and mom for four years. So our hats are off to you guys for that. I know it's not Veterans Day or anything like that, but thank you for your service. The bad thing is, is now they work for the government. So, but I guess, you know, somebody got to do it. So... <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. You know, you, you, I wasn't too sure about it, but after, by the time dinner was done, I felt absolutely confident that the money's going to the right spot. So, so thank you again for your service. And I don't know where, where did Christopher go? Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> there's where you got to look forward to next, Braden, is to know where the wipes are. <laughs> and a diaper. Chris, it was good. <laughs> you know, it was good to have Christopher up here praying for the offering when he was a little feller. We used to make him do it all the time. Do you guys remember those days? So he was like, Lord, um, please have us, help us have a good day. Amen. I mean, so a little, lot better today, man. Good job. Good job. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and jinx it all just for the new people that uh, we do have just a short message today. Joellen is not. Hey. Huh? I know. You, you need to hear this. I stayed, I stayed up all night with you in mind. Oh. But we are in Ecclesiastes, and we, you know, as we said last week, we're going to get out of chapter 1. We can only, things can only be vain for so long, and they were definitely futile. And so today we're going to be in chapter 2, and I want you to bear with me. We're going to do three verses, that's why I think it's going to be pretty short. Um, and I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I don't know what's about, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. We're in church. I wonder if that matters. Do you hear people say that? Oh, we're in church. I can't lie. Well, what does it matter whether you're in church or not? The Bible doesn't say, thou shalt not lie in church. And you know what? I've really kind of, I kind of struggled a little bit 
put this and how to have this be appropriate. But um, so don't be mad at me. It is what it is. What it is. And uh, for those of you who know me, I'm not going to. Uh, you know, I'm not going to try to sugarcoat it. Sometimes I think think we need to hear things. Anyway, Solomon in chapter two. I don't think that he said, "Ooh." I'm done with chapter 1, now I'm going to do chapter 2. But we, as a society, decided that we would call it chapter 2. He said, I said to myself, go ahead, I will test you with pleasure. Enjoy what is good. It turned out to be futile. Verse 2 says, I said about laughter, it's madness. And about pleasure, what does this accomplish? I explore with my mind the pull of wine on my body, and my mind still guiding me with wisdom, and how to grasp folly until I could see what is good for people to do under heaven during the few days of their lives. You know, I think Solomon is really good about reminding us how, uh, how short our time here on earth really is. You know, I have a friend whose birthday is on April 21st, and mine's on the April 28th. And, and Scott is his name, and I don't remember not knowing Scott. That's how long I've known him. We've always known one another. We've always called, you know, the, uh, I call him on his birthday. He called me on my birthday. And we've always done that, but we're talking. And his dad just passed away. And he's had a moment of clarity that... Uh, you know, when we were little kids, 9, 10 years old, we could not wait to be 19. Couldn't wait. And, uh, and it seemed to take forever. Remember that? It took forever. When we got to be 19, we couldn't wait to be 30. It seemed to take forever. We got to 30, and now we're pushing 60, and that went pretty quick. It's going faster and faster and faster. This, this life that we have right now is going to be over. They, 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 they compare it to the grass. You know, you think of the grass out in the field, it's plush, it's green, it looks so cool. And then one day it's just brown and no matter how much you water it, no matter what you do, it stays brown, it dies. A beautiful flower will bloom. And you want to take pictures of it, and it's so cool. But what happens in a couple of weeks? It starts to wilt, and it dies. That's our lives, people. If you got little ones running around, enjoy them. Enjoy, enjoy the, the wipe season. Because they go quick. Enjoy your 20s. Enjoy your teens. Put that phone away, boy. Enjoy, and if you don't put that phone away, your teens will end way before they get good and started. Oh, okay. Oh, he's reading the Bible. Never mind. You know what? I, I, I just think that we sometimes take so many things for granted. We allow life to get in the way, doesn't it? I think what, what we allow to get in the way, for me, I think it is a little bit of what Solomon's talking about right here. Is having a good time. Having a good time. Now, as, as I was putting this together, here's where the conflict I really have. Because, because he's talking about wine. He's talking about drinking. And, uh, man, there's, for so long... The church has been absolutely down on people who drink. And uh, listen, I'm not going to minimize anything. Alcohol pretty much destroyed my youth. I'm not going to lie. Okay? It didn't, didn't mean it to do that, but that's where, where, where it went. Um, we, can't, we can't deny that alcohol in this country... Is it has uh, destroyed families, There's children who've been neglected and abused, both husbands and wives who've been have been uh, left behind or or just not taken care of, because we've confused having a good time with uh, listen, some people, 
can seem to do it. I don't know what the percentage is in our country, but I know there's a whole lot of people like me. And I said this from the pulpit, I say this in, in private and wherever. You know what, I have uh, not had a drink for, for uh, Christopher's, what, 20, how old are you? You're 25, so I probably haven't had a drink in 20, 23 years. Seriously, not one drop. And uh, <coughs> I've had some people tell me, well, you could probably have a drink. And you know what? There are times I've convinced myself I could probably have a drink. But then what the Lord has done for me is he's reminded me how many times in my youth that I had said that. One drink ain't going to hurt. I'm, um, I missed baby appointments. I missed ball games. I missed taking the paycheck home because I convinced myself that one drink ain't going to be a problem. And today, after 20-some years, I'm pretty certain that I probably could go to your house and have a drink with you. Maybe even go home afterwards. But sooner or later, sooner or later, I managed to not go home every single time. It is a trick for me. It's a trick for me. And I don't know if that's just how my body works. It didn't always start that way. I don't know if it's just the way my makeup is or, or whatever you want to say. But I, I, as I was thinking about this, it really, it really all started with a good time. I wanted to have a good time. Everybody in my family from... Uh, from the time I'm a baby, my Eli, the very first place that my Eli went to before we even took him home after the hospital was church. Eli, my Eli and my Christopher know their dad no other way. No other way. The sea, the sea, as a matter of fact, I had a kidney stone. And I was reading on the interstate because it wouldn't pa and the internet that it, that it wouldn't because it wouldn't pass. And I'm reading, what in the world do people do when you got a kidney stone? Well, surgery was an option, or you get a six pack of beer and drink these six beers really fast, and then it'll probably just blow out. And I'm in so much pain. I'm saying, hey, this internet option sounds good. <laughs> so. I give my son some money and one mission to go to town and get dad some beer. What did you come home with? Home with seven. seven up. <laughs> Why did you come home with seven up? Because if your son wasn't worth drinking over a kidney stone, definitely not worth drinking over. <laughs> It was about two weeks ago that I finally forgive him for that logic. <laughs> this is coming from a man who's obviously not had a kidney stone before. <laughs> Gotta be so careful. What? The day's, day's coming, yeah. Hopefully he'll eat smarter. I know. You see him how skinny he was? I just came back from the doctor. And it stepped on the scale of the doctors, and then their scale's a little, their scale had to be off. It did not read the same as my scale. And then, and then Joellen and I get to talking. When I married Joellen, I had like a 27-inch waist. To, to do this, this wedding thing, we went and bought a new pair of britches. I'm not even going to tell you what it is, but it is way, way bigger. <laughs> the doctor, I, when I said about a thing, I go, oh my goodness. I says, maybe my clothes are shrinking. I have to go home and apologize to my wife. Because I've been blaming her for shrinking my clothes. And he says, well, does she feed you dinner every night? I go, most nights. He goes, well, then it's still her fault. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I can come home and say, the doctor said, honey. I started this whole thing with pleasure, and I will never forget the first time that I had a drink. I was pretty young. I'm not even going to tell you how young I was. Embarrassingly, how too young. The first time that I drank with the purpose to hang with my uncles. I have uncles who were eight years, six years, and four years older than me. And so they got the fine task of babysitting Dallas. And uh, 
Some of my very early memories is learning how to play quarters. Any of you guys ever play quarters? Bounce the quarter into the cup. If you don't make it into the cup, you got a drink. I mean, some of my earliest memories. But I'll never forget the first time that I got that I got buzzed or whatever you want to call it. Man, it was like you were enlightened. Man, this is pretty cool. I could understand things. I could talk to people I couldn't talk to. I mean, it was, I don't even know how to describe the feeling. And then I want you to hear what I'm telling you. I want you to hear what I'm telling you. Because this, this is God's honest truth. Is that I spent the next 25 years trying to reach that same, that same spot. And I never could. It was gone. It was a one and done deal. And I'm not going to sit up here and tell you that the whole time I'm growing up and, and in a young adult through my 20s that it was absolutely miserable because as we all know seeking pleasure is fun. The Bible even tells us hey, hey you know what sin is fun for a season but no matter how many times the folks would put me in the treatment center and I would get sober and then be let loose again um it never ended fun. Does that make sense? It sooner or later it came to where it was no fun. Okay? And this, Joe Allen is the one who helped me realize this. When I drink, I have fun. She says, not everybody else around you is having fun. Okay? You might be having a good time, but you make it pretty hard for everybody else to have a good time. And that would be me. I think, at least that's what she says. Because I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of guy when I started drinking, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if you're having fun or not. It's not about you. Why is it always about you? This is about me. And I spent, well, I drank up a marriage, drank up um, relationships. I drank up, I, I mean, Drink up jobs. Do you? Th this was my punishment. You know that, right? Standing up here and preaching is God's way of having a sense of humor for all of the disappointment I was along the way. He said, "You're not gonna go make money like your dad." You know, and I wanted to do is be like my dad. But my dad, if my dad was a drunk, I'm not gonna deny that. But my dad drank different than I did. His, uh, my dad could start drinking on Friday, and he would quit drinking on Sunday. So he could go to work Monday to the end of Friday. And I had a hard time. I'd start drinking on Friday. But man, it was usually like Thursday when I stopped drinking. And that was only because they generally threw me in the county jail for a few hours. My dad, it's hard to keep a job that way. Hard to take care of your family that way. You know? Pretty soon it's not fun. It's not any fun. I remember my youngest or my oldest son, David, his mom got tired of this cycle that I was in. And she says, Well, I'm leaving. David's about four or five years old. And and uh David says, Well, I'm not going with her. So she didn't want to fight with it. She just took my daughter and her and they left. And David stayed with me. And, uh, and, oh, man, so, that poor kid. I mean, I still feel that I could sit him down and apologize to him for the way things were. Every time I see him, you know, David thought it was normal to go to Wonder Bread, the trucks. That's where you got your gas, you know. I remember that uh, I had a entertainment stand, and, and David, he's about my grandson's age, and certain people would come to the house, 
and he would run to that stand. He associated that stand where our drugs were at with these people. And mean. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I, I think I spent some time taking my anger out on him because of my failed marriage. When in the, at the end of the day, the reality was it's because I didn't listen to the people who've gone before me and said, hey, maybe you ought to not be drinking. Maybe you ought to not be partying so much. Shoot, but we, I had a really good job installing carpet. I mean, people paid me for it at the time. Good money. I had a boat. I had a van. We tore all the carpet out of these people's house. And this was, at the time, I mean, these here, today, this would be like a, you know, a half a million dollar house. And we, we put kills down on all the floor. The idea was to come back the next day and put the carpet in. Well, it was really hot that summer. So once we got all the kills down, we decided, well, let's take the boat to Keyhole. It's about 70 miles east from where we lived. And I'm not even going to, not to tell I'm telling you, man, about 45 days later, we showed back up at this job. I was really mad because this person took all my tools and sold them. The people who were, the people who were uh, giving us the job we were doing it for refused to give me any more work. But we were having fun. We were having so much fun. The guy I was with, we, I mean, we had run out of money and run out of beer. But it's summertime, we're at a keyhole. That's where everybody went there. And so they'd be like, well, I guess the party's over. So, oh, the party is not over. Sure enough, somebody would show up who wanted to go for a boat ride. They'd put gas in the boat and buy beer for 45 days. Isn't that something? I think back I mean, at the time, and did I have a good time? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Pork Joe Allen sent me out right after we got married to buy some bread. And two weeks later I showed up and dang if I forgot the bread. That poor woman. I say poor woman, but you know the truth is is Joella knew exactly what she was marrying and who she was marrying. Known her since seventh grade. Joella would they would, I would drink myself half to death and Joellen would come and visit me in the hospital. That's where they would put me, in the hospital, so I could get hydrated. I didn't even think as much as I drank that the fluids and everything, I, mean, I just didn't ever understand that. They wanted you to drink water without anything to make it take the edge off, man. I mean, come on. I'm really fortunate. My son loves me today. Um, I got a pretty good gig. I sure didn't earn it. Sure didn't deserve it. Um, we got people who loved us when our Eli passed away. That was when we realized the impact that the Lord is having through Joel and I's ministry is when we seen our little church would not have, we could not have handled all the people who came to support us when Eli passed away. That's a God doing that. And somebody, I was thinking to myself, man, Eli sure knew a lot of people. You know, and it, and it took somebody to tell me, man, they're not here for Eli, you bonehead. They're here for you. That's God doing that. That's the drunkard that in the scriptures that says, don't be a drunkard. Okay? There is a difference. If we want to say that alcohol is the root of all evils in America, that every Christian should never drink ever again, then you know what? I think that we would be showing that Jesus Christ has got some explaining to do. Because don't we read about him being at a banquet, 
converting big old vats of water into wine. And it didn't say it was like grape juice. It said it was the best. Why did you say the best for the last? Drink isn't the problem. It's the heart behind the one drinking is the problem. I think what we're going to find, listen, if you've done any studying at all about the Jewish people, the Lord gave them all plenty of opportunity to party. He wants his people to enjoy life. Timothy's telling us, dude, if your belly's feeling good, stop drinking that rancid water and have some wine. So for me to stand up here and say, believers today, if you are a born again child of God, you should never ever drink again or else you're, you're going to hell. That just isn't true. It's a great way to control a population though. But I will stand up here and say, listen, if one of your neighbors or your wife or parents coming up and saying, man, I think you're drinking a little too much. Instead of getting all haughty, you might want to sit down and listen for a minute. Because maybe you are drinking too much. And this is going to go both ways. What I really believe in this deal is that, you know, often the church, good church folk, what we want to do is we will have parties. But we won't invite people who we know who can't have fun unless they drink. I don't think that's right. Jesus, he went and hung out with all the drunks, with the prostitutes, with the tax collectors. It was even worse than a government employee. That's who Jesus hung out with. And listen, I'm going to tell you right now too, if you're a Christian, if you don't invite people to your party because, oh, they don't drink and I'm going to drink, listen, that isn't any better than the other way. weird deal, isn't it? I have struggled putting this message together because I don't want to stand up here and tell people, you know, there's a guy on the radio that every year who says the, the biggest problem in America is drink. And he, he speaks for three days on how alcohol is killing America. You know? It may, maybe, maybe he's right. I don't, I don't think so. I think sin, at the end of the day, is what's killing America. I know what I fell into is in, is in, is in 1 Corinthians 6.12. Many of you might know this, and some people can take this and run a completely way different direction with it. But Paul is telling the church in Corinth, Corinthians, who definitely had some issues had some morality issues. The church in Corinthians, if you remember, had some serious character flaws. He tells us, listen, in verse 12, everything is permissible for me. But not everything, I want you to hear me, not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible to me. This is what you need to hear if someone's saying, hey, I think maybe you're, you're going a little too far. I want you to, Paul is saying, but I will not be mastered by anything. The person who, who gets a paycheck, and kids are different today, man, I don't know. Our kids were different. When I was Chris's age, when I leave home, or when I leave work, you go, you go have a couple beers at the pub to, to uh, take the edge off before you go home. And they just don't seem to do that today. I don't, maybe it costs too much. I don't know. But we want to be mastered by nothing. And, we can, and I'm using alcohol in here today because this is where, where uh, Solomon is kind of, kind of saying, man, I've explored with this. I, I've, I've dabbled in this. I checked it out. I'm going to read to you what the, what the Message Bible says in the same verses in the Message. Now, I normally don't, don't put a lot of stock in this, and you can put stock in it if you want or not. But Chuck Swindoll, he, he uses the Message Bible a lot to help get a point across, and that's just what I'm trying to do today. In, in, in verse 1 in the Message, and I'm just going to read it because they got it really... I'm going to read. 
to myself, let's go for it. Experiment with, with pleasure. Have a good time. But there was nothing to it. Nothing but smoke. What do you think of the fun-filled life? Insane. Insane. My verdict on the pursuit of happiness? Who needs it? With the help of a bottle of wine and all the wisdom I could muster, I tried my level best to penetrate the absurdity of life. I wanted to get a handle on anything. Useful we mortals might do during the years we spend on this earth. You know, I visited with Joellen about this the other day, trying to get her insight. And what she had always been taught when, since she became a Christian in the early years is that, you know what, you don't want to get, be drunk all the time because what if somebody needs you? What if there's somebody who, who spiritually needs you? And we can't respond. I mean, that wouldn't have worked for me either. Um, I'd have to, I would invite him with me. Oh, have a couple of drinks, you'll be okay. Okay, there's a tons of things. I don't think that having a good time is the problem. Having a drink is the problem. It's when we put our good time, whether it's our job, I'm going to use a job, money, fame, sex, Name it. Whatever that becomes our master, you got a problem. It's not, it's not pleasure anymore. For me and my, and my friends, we talk about this from time to time, is it wasn't really pleasure anymore. It was a lifestyle. It was a lifestyle void of God. It was a lifestyle that was all about me. And what I wanted and what I needed, what I thought I needed. And not, and it's like I told my kids, every one of them, as they were growing up, when, you, when they uh, turn a certain age, I think it's uh, 21 today. I know at 19, you, it was a coming of age. I mean, everybody drank when you turned 19. Uh, the bad thing about, about that is, is that, oh, have you went and buy your own, your own alcohol yet? I mean, this is people when I'm 19 asking me that. And they go, man, I've been buying my own alcohol since I was 17. That's no big deal. But it was like a rite of passage, right? I'm telling my kids and I'm telling you, just because you can don't mean you have to. I wish I'd have heard that. I wish I would have heard it. Praise God that He takes all things and works them out for the good for those who love Him. Be careful. I think that's what Solomon wants to tell us today. Enjoy your life. You guys are married, you're young. Enjoy it. Enjoy life. But don't be fooled. Don't be fooled of what that enjoyment will look like. Because pretty soon, I can't think of one person, and I have been to at least six different treatment centers. I've been to the county jail. I can't tell you how many times, and I have talked to lots of people. And not one person has told me, oh yeah, man, when I was about 12 years old, I aspired to be an alcoholic. Ooh, I couldn't wait to get hooked on crack. That's not how that works. You have a, you're having a good time. What's well, such a good time, you know? If you have a personality like me, I've always been this way. If you ask my mom even, if one is good, two got to be better. And then pretty soon, bang, here we are. So never will this preacher tell you not to enjoy life, not to have fun. I'm never going to tell you, I better never catch a beer in your hand unless you give me reason to. Unless you give me reason to. And that re reason would be, is are you a drunk? Are you, are you not taking care of what you're to be taking care of? I've, done, I've talked for 25 years. I've talked to people. Oh, well, I love the Lord and He loves me. 
Well, this has nothing to do with it. Of course he loves you. And you might think, yeah, you love the Lord, but he says, if you love me, you will obey me. And he tells us to not be a drunkard. He tells us that if we allow anything to get in our way that prevents us from taking care of our families, then we're worse than a government employee. Thank you. I'm just digging on you, man. You know, it's, you're worse than a tax collector. Just don't be like tax collectors. Well, I'm hoping that other people will do it. I'm hoping that other people who we don't know and we don't love, if they want to wreck their lives and be mastered by other things other than the Lord, then that's fine with them. But for me and my household, but for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to be careful. We're going to be mindful. I think a lot of this stuff, I talked with my mother-in-law, and she has a back porch. And I don't know, Grandma's got to be close to 80. Can't call her an old lady, because she'll get fighting mad if you call her an old lady. And she needs it painted. Now, 20 years ago, this woman could hang she rock better than most men I know. I mean, she's a very capable lady, but she's 80. Her husband's passed. She belongs to a church. So I had a painter come and look at this little porch... And they wanted a thousand bucks. And I said, Ma, what about the people in your church? Do you have any, I mean, we've been to their church. There's men in the church. And she says, you know, since Roger died, not one person has come and asked me how I'm doing. He had to be joking. I said, listen, are you sure? She says, well, I'm a little bullheaded. I'm not going to ask him. I said, well, I agree with that. You shouldn't have to. Shouldn't have to. I said, but if somebody comes up to you, Ma, and says, hey, how are you doing? You got to tell them. That's your responsibility, right? We had this back and forth, back and forth. Why is it this way? Because her church isn't the only one. That's that way. Okay. Why is it this way? You know, we kind of came up with... Um, it's because we're all really superficial people. We want a glad hand. We want to shake your hands. We want to love you on Sunday morning. Other than that, don't bother me. I got my own problem. I got my own stuff. Problem with that. Just like the drunk. Who, oh, God loves me. He forgives me. Listen. We start having superficial relationships with one another. You know where that stems from? Having a superficial relationship with the lover of your soul. So many of us are wandering around with a false sense of security. We can't have this rich relationship with God that I desperately want every one of you here to have. Every one of you can have that. God desires that. But we can't have that rich relationship with God if we're so self-absorbed that it, uh, it's all about me. It's all about I. It's not how the body of Christ is to work. We are to think of others better than ourselves, the Bible says. How do we do that? I think we do that by getting to know one another. Getting to love one another. Allow each other to be ourselves. If you're here today and you're a widow, and you need something, you need help, we can't read your mind. Sorry that it's this way. Ask. And listen, men... If we're here today, and we know that one of these ladies needs something, shame on you for not being over there taking care of it. So don't be superficial. Just don't be mastered by things of the world. Let's be mastered by things of God. Allow Jesus Christ 
who died on the cross so you would not have to go to hell um, allow him to be the master of your life remember what the book says man in Romans he says if you believe if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you, and you uh, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead what church you're saved you're saved. He's, we can't say he's Lord and then ignore one another. We can't say he's Lord and then allow alcohol, money, sex, drugs, power, fame, any of this other stuff to be our master. Don't work that way. It just don't work that way. Anyway, that's all i got to say about that. And uh, I hope when you leave here today, it gives you something to think about during the week. I hope that for the young people here, um, I hope that it uh, gives you something to think about the next time that you crack open that bottle. Okay, not that you uh, are ashamed because you do. Just, just remember, just remember that uh, having a good time is good. Is good, but. Uh, at what cost? At what expense? Anyways, I um, thank you guys for being here today. Again, thank you for loving your kid enough to teach him about the Bible and about who God is. Like I said, he is, he's been a joy. You guys, I publicly say this, I said it the other day, but you guys did a good job raising this young man. And that's, that's the only reason how come I told him when he first started coming around, you guys might remember this, some of you may know, that we had a 16 foot hole dug out back and we still have 10 foot left. So, uh, but we haven't had to use it. And he's just become, he's fit in like an old dirty shirt. And so we love him to pieces and, uh, and we know he's going to take good care of Grace. And you guys just know, as you go back home, I know you're a long ways away from your kids, that uh, we're going to take good care of him while, while he's here. So bow your heads with me, please. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is as true today as it was, the, you know, from the beginning. Um, thank you for trusting us with your word. Thank you for trusting us with, uh, to take your word and to, and to, and to divide it correctly and to uh, figure out the so what and how do we apply this to our lives. Father and I thank you so much for allowing me to see that all the years, all the really good religious people tried to make this. This is not what your word says it is about. Help us, Lord, to enjoy life and still keep you the master of our lives. Thank you for loving us, Father, for, for sending your son. Lord, I thank you for, for Braden's family. And I pray, Lord, that you, would, that you would guard their hearts, that you would guard their minds, and as they get back on the road to head back home, that you would, uh, that you could be with them. I pray, Father, that they could have a, an extremely uneventful trip home. And uh, thank you for Brayden and Grace. And thank you for the, the beautiful future that they have ahead. And for allowing us to be a part of it. We just praise you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.